Hey there and welcome to the third module of the MOOC Microbiome and Health. Today we will learn about the plant microbiome in general, its composition, transmission routes and assembly, as well as the microbiota's potential to influence their host's fitness, simply the plant microbiome infects. So let's start with one microbial group that has revolutionized plant and ecosystem research, mycorrhizal fungi. They are being studied for several decades and represent the best described model for plant microbiome symbiosis so far. Here, the plant provides organic molecules to the fungi, which in turn supply nutrients and water from soil to plant roots. In fact, more than 80% of all vascular plants on our planet rely on the symbiosis with those fungi. Their importance for the whole ecosystem is certainly undeniable. However, thanks to continuous developments in next-generation sequencing, comparable key roles are nowadays suggested also for the entire plant microbiome, including bacteria, archaea, protists and viruses. So based on that, let's start with the plant microbiome in facts. Fact number one, plants are considered as holobionts. The same applies also for all remaining higher organisms, such as humans, animals and insects. The term holobiont describes an assemblage of the eukaryotic host and many other species, which together form an ecological unit. Fact number two. The plant microbiome is involved in several functions for the host plant. These functions include nutrient supply, support during germination and growth, resistance against pests and pathogens, interactions with other microbes and resilience towards abiotic stress. However, for a large share of the plant microbiota, we haven't discovered the particular functions within the holobiont yet. Fact number three. Healthy plants host diverse and abundant microbiota within different habitats. So all plants consist of certain compartments, each providing very different metabolic conditions and are consequently colonized by different microbial communities. The plant compartments are structured in below ground and above ground tissues. Below ground, the rhizosphere is the interface of plant roots and soil and it represents the most diverse microbial habitat on earth. Above ground tissues are subdivided in colosphere, which refers to stem and bark, phylosphere, so the leaves, anthosphere, the habitat of flowers, and carposphere, the fruit. And we have the spermosphere, the seeds. In general, going upwards from roots to phylosphere, the microbial diversity and abundance is gradually decreasing. However, microbiota can colonize all of these tissues, both the outer and the inner parts, and are respectively described as AP and endophytes. But where do these communities even come from? Fact number four. Microbes can colonize the plant via horizontal and vertical transmission. With the term horizontal transmission, we refer to microbes that colonize the plant from the environment. Especially soil represents an important source for microbes. The microbial diversity and abundance in soil is immense and its composition is determined by the soil type, the available nutrients and several other environmental factors. Soil microbes can colonize the rhizosphere and the root endosphere and move from there to above ground plant tissues. Apart from soil, horizontal transmission also occurs through aerosols, insects and other plant tissues. Vertical transmission refers to the process when microbes are transferred from the parents to the next generation. This occurs either through seeds or through so-called vegetative propagation, which you know as runners from strawberry plants. However, and this is very important to keep in mind, not all microbes can colonize plant tissues and even less are transmitted from the mother plant to the next generation. It is rather a highly selective process and also requires specific adaptations of microbes. This is explained by fact number five. The assembly of the plant microbiome is not random but follows certain rules. The rules that determine when and where which microbes colonize the plant are not yet fully understood. Apart from environmental conditions and interactions between microbes, it is especially the genome of the host plant that plays a decisive role. For example, we often see a specific set of microbes to be associated with a specific plant species across very different habitats and environments. This microbial community is assumed to have essential functions for this certain plant species. 
In, pl in fact, plants can, based on individual needs, select microbes from the environment. Yes, seriously, the plant selects. Plants release chemical signals and metabolites such as sugars and organic acids through their roots to soil. Certain microbes are attracted by such metabolites and move towards the roots. The metabolites released can be highly specific, for example to recruit microbes that protect the plants against pathogens, sun or drought. On the side of the microbes, specific adaptations are required as well, such as the ability to penetrate plant cells or to move within the plant without triggering its defense mechanisms. Some of those are even able to colonize the seed endosphere. Several seed endophytes have been shown to exert plant beneficial effects and are even assumed to have a priority effect on environmental microorganisms that target to colonize the young seedling. Thereby, they are expected to strongly influence the microbiome assembly already at this early stage. Fact number 6. Beneficial, neutral and pathogenic microorganisms maintain an equilibrium within their host. Clearly, health and disease of a plant are dependent on the whole microbial community. This means that different microorganisms with different functions interact with each other and thereby modulate the community's diversity and abundance. Thus, also the presence and absence of plant pathogens play a huge role within this complex system. Such functions can also be alternating. Often we see microbes that are in general considered as plant pathogens to be associated with plants that do not show any symptoms of disease. In addition, plant pathogens, if low in numbers, might also act as a trigger to train the immune system of the host plant. As long as this equilibrium exists as such, the plant remains in a healthy state, or eubiosis. Whenever the system gets disturbed, for example by chemical treatments, we will find the microbiome in a state of dysbiosis, which often results in diseased plants. So all of these facts led scientists to elaborate the concept of a plant microbiome coevolution. Especially for endophytes, evidence is increasing that significant changes in lifestyle towards mutual symbiosis between microorganisms and hosts, with benefits for both, have occurred over time. The before-mentioned importance of the plant genotype, the fact that closely related plant species show a more similar microbiota than unrelated plants, the ability to attract certain microbes through root exudates, and the filtration effect afterwards, which allows only few microbial groups to enter internal tissues, underline this concept. Overall, the stability of the whole ecosystem is a strong indication for an evolutionary liaison between plants and microorganisms. However, this theory, although becoming more and more accepted among the scientific community, has yet to be proven. So these were the facts about the plant microbiome. I guess you may have noticed that we are dealing with a highly complex system and we are only at the beginning to understand the details. What we do know, however, is that the plant microbiome provides a wealth of opportunities which can be used to elaborate novel solutions to protect our crop plants and improve their stress resilience in an ecosystem-friendly manner. This is certainly a topic on its own and you will hear more about that in an upcoming chapter called Managing the Plant Microbiome. Before that, we will dive deeper into the plant microbiome using one of our beloved model plants, the apple. See you there!